it is well known that at DMAP discontinuation, there is a rebound effect uh, with uh, a huge increase in bone turnover markers rapidly and a loss of bone mineral density. And uh, in some cases, 7% uh, of patients, it could have, they could have uh, multiple vertebral fracture. So we know that, and now we have to uh, give recommendation to manage the denosumab discontinuation. And uh, that is the purpose of our study, the Realos Bone project, uh, uh, to try to answer and to give recommendation how to avoid the rebound effect at the map discontinuation. Um, the medical societies are anonymous. We have to give a bisphosphonate after the DMAP discontinuation to prevent the uh, rebound effect. But no, to date, we don't know which one, what dose, when, long time. So um, in our study, we first look at the characteristic of uh, bone loss uh, after DMAP discontinuation, and we try to um, uh, give recommendation uh, and uh, we saw in our study that um, uh, even if uh, patients receive a bisphosphonate after the DMAP discontinuation, they could uh, lose bone. Um, and um, the groups without loss of bone, um, they had a very high control of the bone turnover markers. And our first conclusion is to, uh, to control the bone loss after the map discontinuation, you have to strictly control the level of bone turnover markers. This is the first conclusion. The second uh, conclusion is we, we, uh, we, we saw that uh, a woman who did not receive zoledronate treatment before DMAB initiation, they, they lost uh, BMD at DMAB discontinuation. So uh, our second recommendation is uh, to give denosumab in the second line uh, treatment uh, against osteoporosis. We know that the side effects with bisphosphonate uh, are related uh, to a long time exposure of the treatment, um, more than five years. So our proposition is to start with one or two years of uh, bisphosphonate and uh, if um, the osteoporosis is severe to switch off denosumab treatment for uh, four or six years. We can use denosumab till uh, 10 years without side effect and after that to give another bisphosphonate to, to consolidate the, the treatment. So um, we, we explain uh, to the patient uh, our uh, management. So now we have to wait uh, with more patients. Um, our result today report only a result for 71 patients, but our study um, we have uh, 170 patients and we plan to follow them two years and to date we have only result after one year. So uh, now we recommend to control uh, bone turnover markers, but perhaps in two years uh, we would say that only for patients without Bisphosphonate treatment before the MAB initiation, it will be important to control the bone turnover markers, but for others, it's not enough. It's not uh, uh, useful. We, we have to wait two years. We know uh, that uh, the rebound effect based on the bone turnover markers increase. Um, continue, is continuous during uh, two years after the DMAP discontinuation. We have this da data. Um, we, we did not have, uh, we don't have data about um, vert multiple vertebral fracture, but uh, in a, a case report and in series of cases, um, we saw that uh, patients uh, uh, who expected multiple vertebral fracture, it was between um, three months after the DMAP discontinuation till 12 months after the DMAP discontinuation. And after that, we did not observe multiple vertebral fracture. That's why we, we uh, choose to uh, follow our patient during two years. We are a small country, <laughs> we are a small city, and, uh, uh, but we were the first to describe the risk of multiple vertebral fracture in Lausanne, because in Switzerland, um, uh, we, uh, we have a lot of patients uh, uh, under DMAB uh, treatment in first line. It's probably the, the explication, the main explication. And uh, we hope that with uh, 170 patients, it will be enough to give recommendation. And we hope that perhaps other centers will perform uh, the same uh, observation.